Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 257, and we're continuing with our title, The Kingdom Gospel. This will be part 5. Now, we open with the understanding that <clears throat> we are going to experience a tremendous judgment to come upon the earth, the human race, <clears throat> and as a result of this tremendous judgment, everything is going to radically change. Having said that, <clears throat> we want to proceed to give an understanding of the Christian experience <clears throat> will be left also changed. There will be two groups. One group that will suffer as a result of its <clears throat> lack of preparedness and commitment. The other group will be preserved to continue to follow, to follow the Father's master plan. Amen. <clears throat> we want to take a look at the <clears throat> essence and the quintessence of these things. It will deal with the onset of the spread of the gospel. So turn to Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. So the end of the age cannot take place until after the gospel is preached to every single individual in the world. And of course we've said that the preaching will be done at the hands of angels from the heavens. So every man, woman, and child. Yes. <clears throat> yes. To what degree, having heard the gospel of the kingdom from the heavens, will every human understand what they've heard? To the degree at which the principal message is gospel of the kingdom. <clears throat> that a kingdom is going to be established on the earth. And this kingdom will be ruled by God. Everybody will understand that. Okay. Human and non-human. Now after that, principle script, uh, uh, indicates that at that time, those who were called from eternity and have received the spirit of wisdom and revelation will begin to impart understanding to those have a, who have received the gospel message and are now born again. The gospel is preached, but after the gospel is preached, it has to be taught. And after it's taught, those who have received it on a positive uh, uh, basis have to be discipled in it. This is exactly the method that Jesus used. Turn to Matthew 24, verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? This is their hour. This is the time in which the light shines on them and they step into center stage beginning <clears throat> to impart the Father's plan to those who have received His word. Now, These are the ones that are chosen to be for the foundation of the world? Yes. But that will also continue for those who were called temporary. <clears throat> yes, but the inference is 
these are commissioned to go forth at this particular time. It will, it will include everybody, but if okay. this is referring to that one who's been given the authority from eternity to do this in time. Okay. Which brings us to the next principle. We have to understand something. When the gospel is preached, it's preached from heaven. The gospel that is preached comes from the revelation. Right. Turn to Revelation 22. <clears throat> Verses 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto those things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, from the things which are written in this book. So what we have to understand, <clears throat> the gospel is the book of Revelation. Number one. Number two, it's focus main thrust and demand is that it be received as a prophecy the problem with Christianity today is they take everything of the word of God and put it in the here and the now and they want to live as though it's meant to be here and now when everything deals with eternity in verse 19 when it says and out of the holy city the name the name of the person is taken away out of the book of life and out of the holy city mm -hmm. should we understand that all names of those who have the holy spirit in them will be or will have a, a place or a spot in the holy city sure it says the holy city jerusalem is the mother of us all okay <clears throat> so it's talking about a person who's saved that besmirches the uh, instructions of God as it pertains to how this is to be presented. Right, but of course only those who are the Prototokos will commute from the heavens to the new earth. Yes, but this is referring to the time of the beginning of sorrows when this is presented to the human race. If this did not happen, then the, then the book of Revelation has been written for nothing. Because number one, people don't understand it. Number two, it's not for anybody but the Prototokos. Okay. Number three, the only reason that it is for the Prototokos is because it's meant to be understood from God's perspective, not a human perspective. So then mentioning the Holy City refers to the Holy City whilst it's in the heavens, Zion. Oh, yes. And God, not I mean, on the new earth. No. Right, no, okay. No, 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 no. <clears throat> this is talking about beginning of sorrows, up to the time of uh, second coming, millennium period. Okay. Because that's the time in which the gospel, everything pertaining to this book, is going to be presented. After that, everything's closed. Either you're saved or you're not saved. You're going to be part of the resurrection to life or the resurrection to death. So beyond that point, this doesn't, doesn't matter. What's the last point in time? that somebody with the Holy Spirit in them can exist on the earth during tribulation? When is the last point that that person can still live without being immediately wiped out? The last time in which a person can live mm -hmm. and not be wiped out? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, I would say probably before the judgments begin to fall. Oh, that far in, okay. So then that's around the time of Armageddon. Yes. Oh, no, 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 sorry. You said the judgments begin to fall. Begin to the fall. The seven plagues. That's the uh, second half of the tribulation period. Revelation, where would I find that? 
about Revelation uh, 8, eight on. Okay. <clears throat> when God's judges begin to fall, that's it. Everybody's right. either saved or they right. aren't saved. Okay. But what we want to look here is at the presentation of those who have been called to <clears throat> give those that have heard the gospel the understanding of what they have heard, school them in the under, prepare them, if you will, for <clears throat> the gathering. Now, basically, what you're going to teach as a teacher is the whole book of Revelation. Because mm. that's what's being given. We just read it. I testify to every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. This is a book of prophecy. <clears throat> and in this respect, it's going to be the only book that will be in vogue during this time. And in that respect, it's given to those to prepare them for what the church has failed to prepare them for for the last 2,000 years. People are blissfully ignorant of who they are in Christ, what their destiny is, their inheritance, and what their calling is. They don't have the faintest idea. You ask the average Christian, what have you been called to do and you're going to be met with a blank stare? Mm -hmm. Haven't pursued it. This is a time in which <clears throat> those who are destined to become the elder group are going to gravitate to this wholeheartedly. They're going to soak this up like a sponge because it's going to resonate with them. Right. Having said that, we see two things. We said that the book of Revelation has always been meant to be a book of prophecy. Turn to the first chapter of Revelation. Revelation 1, verse 3. 3. Mm -hmm. Now we see the difference between the time in which it's first presented, John's time, and the time at which it will be presented, beginning of sorrows. There's differences and the similarities. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, readeth it's not read in revelation 22 it's heard okay blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy this prophecy so it's presented as a process prophecy book and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand so in john's time in John's time, it was presented to be a written book, <clears throat> to be read and heard. But it's a written book, read and heard, and understood as a prophecy. Would that have been specifically for the pledges? No, that's for everybody. Everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even though we know that everybody's hearing it at the beginning of sorrows. This time you still had you still have apostles on the earth, okay. prophets, okay. those that can take this book and give the true revelation to the right. churches. Not so afterwards. So then, what we're reading here in uh, Revelation one verse three is specifically for the age of grace. Yes. For those, who, in other words, those who've got eyes to see and ears to hear, exactly. who understand. Yeah. In that period of time. Can see it for what it is. Understand it for what it is. That's been lost since the time the apostles passed from the scene because you didn't have anybody to give an accurate revelation. Right. <clears throat> yes, sir. So everybody <clears throat> that applies themselves to the word to understand it mm -hmm. will understand it because it says, seek and ye shall find. So, but the, the thing is, the key is you have to apply. You have to be seeking. Exactly. Exactly. And is what he just said, that's the blessing then. Blessed is he that readeth. Yes. He will he will know. Just And keepeth. Right. Keepeth. But the point I'm making is just because he's pursuing, he will be given that the understanding. Yes. Yes, because with it, God doesn't give something he doesn't want us to have. Sure. 
you could be you could be devoid of not being able to read English, but if you pursue this word, gotta right. make sure you get so wait to do so. It. Yeah. Now turn back to Revelation twenty two. <clears throat> Verse 18. Now this is referring to the, the time when the gospel is proclaimed from the heavens by the angel or angels. So when it says he heareth the words of the prophecy, he's hearing it from heaven. Yes. Yes. And we see the differences here between <coughs> Revelation, the first chapter, Revelation 22. For I testify unto every man that heareth. No reading, right. because you're not going to have any written book right. on earth. It's going to be vocalized from the heavens, and everybody on earth is going to hear it. But then, should we understand that at that point, the person hearing it is going to understand it to a lesser degree than the one who had the opportunity to study it? Depends on the person that's hearing it. Okay. So it's audible. Oh, yes, very much so. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Again, it's presented as a book of prophecy. Things that are going to happen have not yet happened. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Hmm. That's not mentioned in Revelation, the first chapter, because it wasn't the time in which the plagues and the judgments would down. be right. available to be poured out. This is a time beginning of sorrows and all things are reaching culmination. Jesus said, this gospel will go forth, then shall the end come. Yes. Okay. Having said that, we're going to try to put these things together here. Scripture teaches the prime teaching, prime teaching will be the coming kingdom and its destruction of the current Luciferian kingdoms that will exist at that time. This is the main theme that's going to be inculcated to those that hear the gospel. That's why it's so important for them to understand that it's a prophecy. Yes. It's interesting how it's been put here. It's saying there's going to be a testimony from every one of us that the, the kingdom is coming that will destroy the kingdoms that are current and will be the everlasting king. And, and, but that means it's going to be for a, for a period of time, the prophecy has to keep going forward and forward and forward. And that's going to irritate every fallen being to come against those who are professing that. That's where you get the martyrs. They ain't going to want to hear that. They're going to kill people for saying it. Turn to um, Daniel. Jones, I have something to ask about the martyrs. Yes. Okay, we know we know the very first martyrs of Christ were when Herod decided to kill all the firstborn of uh, of the Jews. So is that correct? Well, no, they weren't martyrs. They, they were, were victims. They weren't preaching anything. These were babies. Okay. All right. So the just because they're killed doesn't mean they're martyrs. Yeah, martyr is somebody who's killed because of his stand for Christ. Well, see, yeah. he was definitely trying to eliminate the, the prophecy of the, the child by killing the the firstborn. Yeah. Yeah, well, they were but, victims. But they're of, not considered martyrs. No. Okay, so that's interesting. Because they, they, they didn't initiate anything okay. to cause them to be killed. They were killed because of a decision that he made based off of what he considered to be a threat to his throne. Right. Okay, Daniel, second chapter. Daniel 2, what? 44. <clears throat> the book of Revelation is a culmination of the books of Daniel. Um, Zechariah and uh, Isaiah, the prophetic books that you find in the Old Covenant, reached a culmination in the book of Revelation. Verse 44, And in the days of these kings, Luciferian kings, 
So the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. This is going to be the basic theme of the gospel message. That those that are being taught are going to be inculcated with to understand because the time in which they exist will be a time in which everything is dominated by fallen intelligences the societies that everybody's going to be in are all going to be blasphemous detestations in the sight of God and the light of the gospel is to let people know that this is not going to endure. This is going to be destroyed. God's going to set up a kingdom that will last forever. And these individuals ultimately are going to be brought down and brought to punishment. The understanding that the world that will exist at that day will not never consider that. To them, it's going to look like a permanent situation. Because number one, it's a kingdom that the scripture says is altered. Luciferian influence is going to be so ingrained in the human mentality that they're going to think <clears throat> that nothing will ever change. Mm, right now. But to a greater degree, a more intense degree. That's why in the Revelation the gospel is presented as a prophecy. Because people, if they take it as a present day situation, they won't believe it. Okay. Because they're looking around and they're saying that this is impossible to happen. You're, 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 you're fabricating things. But when they understand and it's ingrained to them that this is not permanent, it's only an illusion of permanency this is going to be taken down and God is going to dominate with his own kingdom. When that concept penetrates people, then they're going to be set in motion to be open to hear everything else dealing with the gospel message. See, well, Jonesy, what's missing out of, out of most people's interpretation of the scriptures is the, sh the reality shift that's going to partake. But the thing with this is, so... People going on. Nobody's taught that before. This uh, you, you're making more out of out of the scriptures than it says. This that you know, But the thing of it is, is if you're studying, if you're seeking, then you get to break down the same way you keep delivering to us. Yeah. You have spent the time behind the book, Mr. Jones, and so you have put it into words that are perfectly understandable to us, and we so we can see where we're at. In, in your description of what what's going on, we can see where each one of our personal growth has put us in in your teaching but more than that the the things is obviously have not happened yet so therefore it has to be prophecy it's self evident you know there is there is no well that happened in in 90 AD or was, no 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 it's all prophetic it's all it's very plain it has not happened yet but you can't do your own thinking if you're relying on somebody else's interpretation that has been passed down for years and years and years. Exactly. you got to study to show yourself approved, and that's what we're doing here. Exactly. That's why you have such division in the church world today, because people teach, the book of Revelation has already happened. <laughs> they teach, uh, the Kingdom Now movement teaches, that the only thing that's left is for the church to conquer the world and wait for Christ to return to give the kingdom over in his hands. Jonesy, where it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He's speaking to people that believe and maybe even confess in Jesus. He's saying, don't be once saved, always saved in your thinking. You have some doing left to do. Yes. And we're talking about me, him, you, All you. Us. Yes, definitely. But you take a, a look at today, people think in terms of permanency. <clears throat> you give Jeremiah 25 to the average person, the first thing that they're going to think about, oh, that's a thousand it's years from now. Oh, it's already happened. 
<laughs> well, I imagine they, 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 they can't see it already happening if you describe, well, when did it happen? Okay, but, but nobody thinks Bodies like that. Bodies were all over the earth. When did they hear God speak it was the from flood. heaven? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I'm serious. That's how they okay. think. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're thinking basically is permanency here yeah. and now. Yeah. Oh, I've got it made. I'm, you know, I'm good to go. Uh, the Bible even talks about in the end shall come scoffers after their own lust, saying, "When's this going to happen? Sure. This has been going on. There's never been a change. It's not going to be a change." If People have a mindset of permanency now. What do you think it's going to be like in the tribulation period with some Luciferian I, I, I don't think basically <coughs> dominating the thinking of people and putting in that mind, I'm your God. There's nothing outside of this. Well, in the way in the world, they're going to believe objectively anything that you say that dealing with the truth lean not on your own understanding and the thing that is is seek and ye shall find the, the more than that is that the the reliance upon work out your own salvation with fear and trembling means up until the end you have to be busy digging seeking and not being comfortable that I am going in the rapture because the because my pastor says so, or that's the way I believe it. This no, it's it's a continuous, continuous thing, and each man in his own order is the way the scripture teaches is is how we're going to depart. So once once I understood that assemblies was the closest, the closest to what we're understanding, mm -hmm. and yet the assemblies the assemblies doctrine. Is like you know Jack and Jill nonsense in comparison in, in comparison to the, the truths that we're we're receiving. It became very clear to me that the world really is in trouble, oh, deep yes, deep trouble. Yes. They're not getting out of this one. So it makes perfect sense to me that the shout is probably the best thing that you can uh, expect. To <laughs> I'm going to stop there. It's, yes, it's just yes. too much. Well, it'll definitely get people's attention. Hmm. But let's go on. The teachers are going to work on this principle in a reality in which the mindset has the tendency to see things permanently because things are operating supernaturally. Yes. Now, with having said that, Scripture teaches the prime teaching will pertain to the Lord as King of Kings and Director of the events leading to the establishment of the Kingdom. Revelation 1, verses 5 to 7. And from Jesus Christ, who was the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, Unto him that loved us and washed us in his own and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so amen. Now understand understand that this is being preached in the background of turn to second Thessalonians second chapter Verse 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Falling away apostasy. It's starting now. At the time that the gospel is going to be preached, it's to be in its fullness. What's the falling away? Defection from truth. The whole world will be in an altered belief system, diametrically opposed to what the truth is presenting. 
being presented in that gospel. Continuing on. But sorry, are you saying that at this point everybody believes the diametri diametrically opposed? Diametrically opposed. Yes. Uh, understanding. Understanding. Mm -hmm. More than that, what, what I'm getting from this is that all of us know where we're at, how much we believe, how much God, you know, is in our lives, so on and so forth. Well, when all of a sudden, well, that stuff you've been reading and, and hanging on to for a that's all, that makes me feel bad that I'm not doing enough. So if I just reject it, then I'm no longer responsible for it, so I don't feel bad, you know, because the, the guilt that I feel is easier to just reject it, d walk away from it, and then I can go on about my merry day, you know, not being feeling guilty about me not doing anything. And so mm -hmm. th that's what this is. Rationale. The defection from truth. Because, look, if you partake of truth, it changes you. It gives you, you're starting to come alive. And if you say, well, but I, but I feel guilty because I'm not doing it enough, so it's easy to just reject seeking this truth saying and walk in the world, it's like, it's such a... Uh, it, just, it makes sense to me. Makes mm -hmm. sense to me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the apostasy <clears throat> is in vogue heavily at this time, mm -hmm. but it goes beyond that because the apostasy gives the inference, the entrance into the worship of gods polytheism. People reject the truth of one God, the reality of the Father, and they're going to accept the reality of many, a multiplicity of gods. Then he goes on to say, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, that's the end of the apostasy, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, of that is worship, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We have to understand that the whole world is going to operate over this concept of a multiplicity of gods. It's not going to be a hypothetical, it's going to be a reality in the minds of the human race. Opp opposition opposing the truth of the gospel. Mr. Smith. Just the mere fact that we have a being competing for the allegiance of I am God, he's not God. The whole fact that that is in partake is even happening is like, okay, so us humans have to figure out, well, we have to figure out which God is the right God. So there must be a God of God. So let's go to him. I would think logically speaking, if there's a competition of I'm God, he's God, there's God. This, so we're, we're obligated to make a, a wise decision or a decision that will be beneficial to us. So. It, it just it's just an interesting thing where God has given it put it right back in our hands now what will you do but the idea at this point in time is that each God will have carved up his own estate in which the individual group or the individual person is going to be under that influence influence is what's controlling now direct influence if you figure today you look at this world and how many people even believe in the God of the Bible out of 8 billion people and nobody can see any other beings but their influence is so great today that Christianity is only one of many religions the Buddhists believe in something Shintos believe in something Muslims believe in something at this time it's going to put what's happening today in the shade because you're going to see these guys you're going to feel their influence. I'm talking about the people that now have heard the gospel and come out of that belief system, but are still within it. It surrounds them. Against that backdrop, you as a teacher are going to have to bring forth truth to that person who's bombarded daily with the reality of a Zeus a Hera, right. uh, 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 an Achilles, or whoever right. a demigod right. in the neighborhood might happen to be. The gospel that's being preached of the kingdom has to be preached in power. It's not going to be a mamby-pamby type of thing that you have today with a get saved message. It's going to be, you're going to walk into a place 
when you speak, just like Jesus said, when you speak, signs and wonders are going to follow. Amen. Has to be that Amen. way. Because if it isn't, nobody's going to believe you. Because the God that these guys are worshiping right. has got power. Exactly. Exactly. 